a growing passion is made possible by Gelson's Market, a full-service specialty grocery store offering the amenities of a supermarket with the local flavor of a neighborhood market. The Metropolitan Water District of Southern California. Laura Gallinson. Joe and Julie Walker. And with the support of viewers like you, thank you. You might think of forests as being in the mountains or somewhere else far away. But there are forests here in the city too. They're called urban forests and they include all the plants and especially all the trees that live in our urban environment. Trees and other plants shade us and they produce the oxygen we breathe. They filter the air and they cool the atmosphere. They collect rainwater and prevent flooding. Trees make neighborhoods healthier, more walkable, and help create a sense of community. Trees growing in cities create urban forests that offer so many benefits. They're one of our best tools in countering the effects of climate change, as we'll see today on A Growing Passion. It's tough to be a tree in the city. You gotta be watered. You need time in the dark. That's important for trees. You need people who will maintain you and you need someone who will advocate for you. When Andy Lipkiss was growing up in Los Angeles in the 1950s and 60s, the air was thick with smog. Pollution was so bad that schools canceled outdoor playtime and trees started turning brown. 1970 was the first Earth Day. I participated. That summer I went to camp. My parents sent me to the mountains to get me out of the smog. That summer we learned that the smog in LA was moving to the mountains, the trees were breathing it in, and it was killing them. We were told that that forest would be dead by the year 2000, but that there were smog-resistant trees that could be used to save the forest, and we were invited to plant them. And I did it, and that summer changed my life. Andy Lipkiss went on to found Tree People, an organization that champions a greener, more climate-resilient Los Angeles. Children and adults gather at Tree People's 45-acre park atop the Hollywood Hills. Here they learn to be citizen foresters, leaders who protect and plant trees in their communities. What we've done is taken what was a forest and a natural watershed and overlaid concrete and buildings onto it and created a, a mess of problems, flooding, water shortages, pollution growing severe heat that's threatening people's quality of life. To understand the value of trees and watersheds, we walk through Tree People's watershed garden display. That red bed is beautiful. It's gorgeous, and that's what used to line the LA River, and here we are at a representation of a creek that fed the LA River. Historically, were there lots of trees in this area? Yes, the whole valley floor was covered with oaks and sycamores. And in fact, the Spanish explorers who discovered Los Angeles noted in their journals that they could walk from one end of the valley all the way to the other and never not be under the shade of an oak tree. And they made a functioning watershed. They dropped their leaves and their twigs and they made mulch. And this acts like a sponge and its habitat for hundreds of species of critters from microscopic to snakes and, uh, and rodents and they all dig and drill and it forms a sponge and a tank and a treatment plant and the critters everything cleans the water and sends it to the aquifer to recharge our water supply and they s send it slowly to the river to keep the river flowing that's how it should work that's how it used to work and it can work again what is that that is our beaches, bays, and ocean today. It's ugly. It's more than ugly. It is toxic, and it's killing fish, making people sick, and really damaging the earth. So where is all that coming from? Let me show you. Well, this looks like where I grew up in the valley. Sidewalks, streets, houses, rose bushes, and lawn. Right. 
we actually took out the trees that were here and paved it with yeah. concrete, asphalt, houses, parking lots. Nothing that absorbs water. Two thirds of Los Angeles, the land is sealed and the water runs off. 70% of the water in Southern California is used to irrigate landscapes like this that are really inefficient. When it does rain, the way our codes were designed, our homes capture the water on the roof very efficiently, but then we send it down the drain pipe to the sidewalk, down our pathways, our driveways, and to our street. Let's pretend this is oil that's dropped from our cars or any of those pollutants that have dropped on the ground. They hit the water and they flow into the storm drain. And then we also wash down our sidewalks and our driveways and we wash that water and that trash down in there so we have a nice clean driveway and it goes to the ocean. So right now the there LA River has been concretized in order to protect people so there's no floods. But in the meantime, all the water that would have otherwise been absorbed into the soil and all the trash are going down to the ocean and carrying all those pollutants out to sea. Exactly. But we're not stuck with this. This is the alternative, right? This is a home in an urban forest. Well, we're seeing a garden that is very water efficient. Same amount of rain that's falling, instead of it running away, We've got a landscape that is mulch that's acting like the sponge. The water is flowing down and it can grab a bunch of flood water and put it straight in the ground without creating a flood. Water is being captured in a tank. Now this rain barrel is a thimble for the amount of water that we need to capture. And we can do just like in Australia, put very large tanks, thousands of gallons, and they can look beautiful. But this is, I mean, the whole thing, the whole system acts as part of the urban forest because, I mean, I hear the birds and the trees. It feels so much cooler standing in front of this house as compared to the other house. But we have shade. We have trees doing what trees do. They're cooling the place down. They're doing evaporative cooling. They're saving us energy from air conditioning. And they're saving our lives by cooling down extreme temperatures to protect us from the increasing urban heat. The first step in creating urban forests is to engage people and inspire them to imagine their communities covered with trees. What is the one thing that's most important for a successful urban forest? People. People? That's why tree people is one word. You can't separate them. We can't have plant trees and have them live without people participating and being part of their dream and part of what they do to care for them. When we bring them together, we've got an urban forest. The average lifespan of an urban tree is between 7 and 15 years. Hardly enough time for a tree to grow big enough to make a difference. After years of neglect, the city of San Diego is making the urban forest a priority. Very few trees were planted during the Great Recession, and existing trees were lost during California's latest years-long drought. But that's all changing. Lynette, I look at these trees and they're aging out, they're dying. Why is that? They absolutely are aging and dying, um, largely because of a lack of resources, uh, a lack of funding is included in that. And then, I mean, the bigger picture of things is a lack of uh, focus and appreciation and understanding of the benefits that the trees are offering us. Lynette Short works for CAL FIRE. Now, you might think of CAL FIRE as the organization that puts out forest fires, but they do much more than that. CAL FIRE is a natural resource management agency that assists San Diego and other jurisdictions in developing and managing their urban forests. So people don't understand the value of trees? No, they absolutely do not. And what do you think that's, why is that? Largely because the benefits are intangible. You can't touch it, you can't see it. What would that be? Or you just don't think about it. Um, the first one that comes to my mind is the shade, the shade value that they offer. And people are becoming aware of this, but the greenhouse gas um, sequestration that they offer, they're, they're cleaning our air. It's just not something at the top of people's minds every day. In order to manage the urban forest, you need tools for measuring and tracking the tree canopy. CAL FIRE funds projects to create tree maps that document where trees are and the size of that canopy. The data show that between 1985 and 2002, San Diego County's tree cover decreased by almost a third. While the canopy was shrinking, urban San Diego expanded by more than 40%. That's not good. 
In addition, recent tree maps show that disadvantaged communities have the smallest percent of tree cover. So the dark green is over 20 percent. That's where there's the most tree canopy cover. Correct. And that goes all the way to the yellow where it's zero to nine percent. Yes. The areas here uh, surrounded in red are the census tracts in the top 25 percent at-risk communities for pollution, health risks, and uneven socioeconomic burden. So I can, I'm not surprised because all the freeways go through this area and these are heavily, heavily trafficked areas. So there's gotta be a lot of, of auto exhaust and all that kind of thing. Vehicle emissions play a big part in, uh, in the pollution burden in this, but there's, uh, there's a lot more to it than, you, than meets the eye on this map. California's Air Resources Board asked CAL FIRE to focus its urban forestry funding on expanding the tree canopy in disadvantaged communities. Ultimately, you, we, we want to try and green all of the areas, but because these are the highest disadvantaged areas, those are the primary and first places that we're going to focus the funds to increase the tree canopy. There are less trees in communities that are poor. San Diego City Council member David Alvarez represents District 8, which includes several disadvantaged communities. We know, for example, in the communities, like many of the ones that I represent, where there are less trees planted, we have higher levels of heat. There are illnesses related to heat. Uh, we have higher levels of asthma. We're in an old neighborhood, the oldest neighborhood, right? Of One of the oldest, yes, that's right. Were there trees here before? Well, I think at some point there were. Just like you see the houses have been sort of subdivided and the lots have, been, have changed over time. You also have some, not medians, but on the sidewalks, you have some green paths that you could tell there was something there at some point in some of these older neighborhoods, and that doesn't exist anymore. So it's changed over time. And we're starting in these older urban neighborhoods where uh, the tree infrastructure, if you will, has been really falling behind. I took a walk through the neighborhood wow. with Dr. Pooja Batra. She's an ecologist whose work highlights nature-based solutions for creating resilient, livable cities. We took an infrared thermometer along to see how trees and landscapes cool the environment. Here we are in one of the typical District 8 neighborhoods. It's really harsh asphalt, concrete, right? right? Yeah, it's I kind brought, of winding in this it, part of the sidewalk. It is, and I brought my little portable infrared oh, thermometer. Nice. Let's see so, what we got. Yep. Uh, the air is like 60, 83. 83. Yeah, coming off the concrete. And okay. what do you think of what's going to happen to the asphalt? Uh, it's definitely going to be hotter. I can feel it's warmer already. 94. 94. So this is the shady part of the street. There's yeah, a canopy like the, here. It's like the temperature here. All right. 61. 61. So that means there's like a 30 degree difference between the asphalt and the concrete here, and 20 degrees between here and the concrete in the sunny area. Without the shade. That is huge. That really says something significant about what shade provides. Is doing. Now imagine if this shade were being cast on your house in the middle of these summer heat waves that we have. Just think about how much your air conditioning demand would decrease, how much lower your electricity bills would be at sure. home. And we know that trees and greenery bring down our stress levels. Yeah, I mean, so, look at this. This is a lovely little garden. It is. And the other thing I noticed is that there's irrigation in here, so somebody must be taking care of these trees. Yes, and that's a really important point. In order to get to our target in San Diego of increasing canopy cover to 35%, one of the most important things we can do is to maintain the trees that we already have so that they can continue to grow. You know, even the cars choose to park under the shade. Yeah, I know that I always look for the shaded spots. Here we are next to the school. Hear the kids? Hear the kids playing. Yep. And what trees do we have here? Palm trees and kind of decrepit ones at that. Yeah, palm trees are of course very common here in San Diego, but they're not really shade trees. They don't, they don't give us the kinds of canopy cover that we really need in order to bring our temperatures down in the city. Black wall next to the school, 86 degrees. We measured the concrete at 86 degrees, while the asphalt was 106. This is a really good example of what we call the urban heat island effect. 
these dark surfaces absorb heat and then they're just radiating that out all night long. And so the temperature never quite cools down. Trees alleviate the heat island effect. Their shade keeps the hardscape from heating up. They cool the air through evapotranspiration. And rather than absorb heat and sunlight, trees deflect it. Artificial turf, let's check the temperature. Wow. 148? 148. Wow, that really says something for a plastic surface. Right, and it's the backing on that is black. So essentially, this is acting the same way that asphalt does. Even that harder. dark surface, there's no evaporative cooling, yeah. so it's contributing to that urban heat island. Currently, 13% of the city of San Diego is covered by tree canopy. The goal is to have 35% coverage by 2035. That will make a huge difference in the city's livability and slow the local heating effects of climate change. This is a beautiful old tree. If we had a whole city of these, would that solve our problem? Trees provide us with so many ecosystem services. Oh, by ecosystem services, you're talking about all the different functions that our communities need in order to be healthy, right? Exactly. Urban trees cool our air, they filter air pollution, they absorb stormwater runoff, and they prevent water pollution from entering the bay. In addition to that, they create healthy, friendly, inviting areas for communities to come together. So what we need are more trees like this. Today, the city of San Diego's streets are lined with about 200,000 trees and 48,000 palms. Tree maps show there's room to plant more than four times that number. There's a strong correlation between tree cover, lower crime rates, and improved community health. Trees also make neighborhoods beautiful. At the direction of city leaders and with funding from CAL FIRE, San Diego will plant 500 trees over the next five years in disadvantaged communities. That's a big step towards increasing the urban forest canopy. That's a nice looking tree. It sure is. This is a holly oak tree, and I've seen these before, but I'm not really sure what they are. Are there water in here? The contractor will fill this bag once a week, and then the, the water will drip through on a slow basis to give the tree the water that it needs, and it's part of taking care of the trees for the first three years of its life. And this is great. I'm your new tree, I'm a holly oak tree. To learn more about your tree planting and tree care visit, and then there's the URL for the city, and then there's the scan code. So this is really how they're connecting to the community. Absolutely, almost everybody has a smartphone, they can go to the square code that will give them into the city's website about how to care for trees and why they're important. The new trees will capture roughly seven million pounds of carbon over their lifetimes. They'll also make these neighborhoods more welcoming. The people will be healthier, and the community ultimately more livable. I can just imagine when these grow up, this tree is going to feel yes. completely different. Yes, it'll yeah. be awesome. Having trees in the neighborhood isn't just about adding more trees. It's also about caring for mature, established trees. Save the Peninsula Trees was founded by residents of San Diego's Ocean Beach community. These concerned citizens came together after some enormous and beloved trees were cut down in their neighborhood. I understand this is pretty much the kind of tree that started all this, right? Yes, it is. This is a, a Torrey pine tree. It's about um, 110 years old. Everybody in OB knows that these trees and this street. And so um, when we started losing our Torrey pines on Saratoga Avenue, people were very upset. The city came and removed the trees. Um, they felt that the trees were a risk to public safety and uh, that they needed to come down. When the third tree on this block was removed, uh, the community pushed back. Neighbors came together to begin a dialogue with their local representatives. The goal was to preserve the remaining Torrey Pines and other important trees in the district. And what became clear to us were two things. One, trees need advocacy. They need somebody to stand up for them. They're not ambulatory, they can't move out of the way. So we need people out there speaking for them. And you need the commitment of your local government to invest the time and the energy and the budget to take care of these mature trees. 
about five of us women decided to start a group called Save Peninsula Trees, and we keep meeting every month. Oh, here's a quiz. How much of Ocean Beach land is already covered by tree canopy? I just wanted to be a part of this to learn more about trees. I'm not an expert on trees, and but I'm surrounded by these wonderful women that are. And uh, you know, one of my goals is to create you know more advocacy for trees. But this is showing what the trees are in Ocean Beach. I'm not an expert on trees either, but I I saw the need for someone to volunteer for the forestry board for, to represent our district because I wanted to be one step ahead where I could know what was coming and maybe intervene before we lose any more trees. Save the Peninsula Trees is educating their neighbors about trees and training them to advocate for trees in the community. Any of these laws and regulations you look at or suggestions, their opinions that people agreed on at the time, they could always be changed. If we want to change them, we are the city. Initially, the women turned the information they gathered into a handbook with a focus on Ocean Beach. Now, their handbook is being used as a model for instilling tree pride in any neighborhood. So pull out your maps and we're gonna take a look at that question about where would we want more trees here? Today, there's a bond between neighbors determined to protect trees, one voice at a time. I was out working on my yard this morning and heard Linda ask if I was home and I popped up over the fence and she asked me if I wanted to attend a meeting about trees this morning and the front of my yard is rather bare of trees and she said that the city would provide trees for me if I filled out the proper application and paperwork and to come attend the meeting to learn more about this process and here I am. Yay. Thank you, thank you Linda. Thank you for coming. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, you got it? Tree San Diego is a nonprofit focused on improving the quality and the quantity of San Diego County's tree canopy. Can I help you with that? Yeah. Is that one stubborn? They work with community partners around the region to plant and care for street trees. Last year, a crew of young people from Urban Corps planted these trees in Chula Vista, a city just south of San Diego. Tree San Diego then partnered with a group of local Girl Scouts and their friends to keep the trees watered and well cared for. This project was very interesting because it was long-term and we needed help for three years. So I got the older girls together. I said, this is on the table, who wants to? And Mina was the one that raised her hand right away and said she'd do it. I've been doing this since last July. I do it because um, it's a good way to give back to our community. And I think it's a really good excuse to get together with my friends and do something good. I like contributing in the ways that I can giving back a little part of what life has given me. <laughs> we have like nothing to do on Saturdays, so I'm actually like, doing something that's gonna be worthwhile. And it's nice to see the outcome of the trees every other weekend or so, to see them that they're actually growing and making progress. The Tree Amigos! These high school students aren't all Girl Scouts, of course, but their school has a community service requirement so they committed to caring for these trees until they graduate. They work for basically almost two hours and they water two of these trees. And they do that how often? So every week. Every week. That was every week from July through October. Yeah, in the hot months. In the hot months, and then it's every other week now. Trees need at least three years of ongoing care to become established. Five years is even better. Cared for correctly, an established tree will live for decades. So today, Tree San Diego volunteers are training the younger Girl Scouts, including Brownies, to carry on this important work. See this hole around this little tree? We want the water to go around there so that it goes in there and doesn't run out and water the rest of the yard, right? So what does that mean about how we pour it? Right, slowly, slowly, okay? Everybody good with that? Excellent. You must know how to do this, huh? Thank you. Have you done it before? Yes, I've done it many times. I can tell. This was the first step. Second step really begins this coming July where we have to water all 700 trees once wow. a week. And so we're going to have to have quite a few more volunteers. So anybody watching who would like to volunteer to help water trees on a weekend, please check with treesandiego.org. It's not just a matter of getting the trees planted and maintained, but also building tree stewardship. And that's part of what you've seen today in bringing in groups such as the Girl Scouts who step up, people from the community who step up 
and are willing to take care of the trees, not only for the first three years, but really keep an eye out for them for a lifetime. The girls have this to show that maybe people don't know, but they know they did it. It was because of them that trees are now growing and are strong and are part of the community. You know, it does a lot for the girls because they were girls that thought they weren't important. They thought their community wasn't important. And guess what? All this that makes your community be beautiful, you did it. Adding more trees to cities helps make cities more hospitable and ecologically sound. More than that, people who learn to care for trees also tend to care for one another. Trees! Now more than ever, cities and nature need each other. Urban forests bring nature into urban areas, along with many other benefits, creating more beautiful, livable, and functional cities. Connect with a growing passion for gardening tips, behind-the-scenes updates, and interact with other fans. Upload your own photos and tell us how you are helping California grow. Trees are on the job every day to improve the environment and our quality of life. It's our job to maintain them and advocate for them so together we can thrive. I'm Nan Sturman. Thanks for watching. Support for this program comes from the KPBS Explore Local Content Fund, supporting new ideas and programs for San Diego.